go do that. Okay. All right, we're recording. Okay, so um, this is a training for what is Boxes of Hope? What is it all about? Um, like I said, we've been talking to the leaders and the workers about this, and maybe you hopped on here and you say, well, you know, I, I want to help out in this. I haven't really done things before like this. Uh, what is this all about? And especially now, this is a very a very different time. We have to do things in a different way. We have to think outside the box and we have to be safe. We want to spread hope. We don't want to spread COVID-19. We don't want to spread any type of illness. So there's um, some extra safety precautions that we will be taking. And I, I really need everyone to take those precautions, such as masks on all the time when you're helping out with this outreach, gloves all the time when you're helping out with this outreach, and making sure that you keep social distancing. I know it's hard. We love each other. And when we come together, we want to, you know, be close to each other. Um, but we need to make sure that we keep six feet distance. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and um, I'm going to show you um, a, a PowerPoint presentation and we're going to go through it. If anyone has any problems, you can, you know, if you can't see it, if you can't hear me, please let me know. You can unmute yourself and just let me know and then go back to mute yourself and I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, I don't think there's anyone else that is waiting, but if anyone else is, I don't think anyone else is waiting. Okay, so we're gonna go right into it. Everyone can still hear me? All right, I'm about to um, change up my screen real quick. There it is. Just give me one second. Okay. All right. Get rid of this. Ah. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find my mouse. All right. How do I get rid of this thing? <laughs> Hold on one second, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get rid of something, but I can't. It's in the way. Mm, oh, there we go. Um, this is new for me too. So just bear with me, I'm sorry. I want this out of here. Okay. Share. Let's go to desktop one. Okay. There we go. Okay. I got it. Sorry about that. Okay. So Let's go back, can we go back? There we go, okay, so Boxes of Hope, Spreading Hope Faster Than COVID-19 um, training meeting. Let's go ahead. Now, Ed Stetzer uh, has said that now is not the time for the church to be on pause. It's time for her to be on mission, and I've definitely felt this in my heart that uh, we really need to be doing more uh, than just live streaming, and I'm glad we got the live streaming going, and even our live streaming needs improvements, and um, we're, we're going to make those improvements. However, you know, we need to do more uh, for the people in Yonkers, and, and I'm telling you, um, this, this started in New Jersey and um, at, at a church called Evangel, and at this church, they started it, and it just blew up at their church. And, um, you know, Convoy of Hope was able to help and, and give things that they needed. And, um, and then they wanted to share this with other churches. So it's, it's, it's going across the U.S. right now. And we're one of the churches that are also doing it. And I believe at this point, we're the only church in Yonkers doing it. And um, we're only three there's only three churches right now doing it in New York itself. So, um, so definitely this is a big thing that's going on all over and um, we're part of it. So we're gonna talk about three things. And the first thing is the pain. Um, and maybe some of you have, have felt this pain. Um, and so the pain, um, you know, with this 14 day self quarantine, um, let me see here. Oh, there we go, okay. 
Um, you know, if you're exposed to someone with COVID-19, if you live with someone exposed to COVID-19, if uh, you've contracted COVID-19, um, if you live with someone who has contracted COVID-19, you have to self-quarantine for these 14 days. Now, thank God uh, I can be free and go out of my house and be safe and everything. And many of us can do that. But just imagine, and some of us have, have gone through this, um, just imagine being home for 14 days, not being able to leave, not being able to see people. It's, it's something, it's a pain that many people are feeling right now. Um, emotional and spiritual impact of a 14 um, day self quarantine. Uh, many experience depression, anxiety, crippling fear, shame, um, as shame from, you know, hiding the news from friends and family that they are sick um, and questioning God. And, you know, they even may have a loss of faith. Um, and then, you know, the 14 day quarantine families will be confined for entire life of virus spread through the family, the vulnerable individual with health issues could be living in homes. And um, so this is a, a text that um, the pastor in New Jersey that I told you about, his name is Chris, um, he got from someone um, that they gave a box of hope to. And uh, this is a person that actually has been in church for a very long time. This is a person, hold on one second. I think there's people that are trying to get in. I'm gonna try to get out of this real quick. Um, participants. Oh yes, there are people. So let me let them in real quick. It's hard, I can't see my, my mouse. Let me get to it. Whoever's trying, uh, I know Eusebio's trying to get in, but I can't get her in for some reason. All right, we're gonna go back. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so um, sorry. Let me let Eusebio in. Let me get rid of that. Now let me go back to this. Okay. Sorry. So this is from someone that um, has been a Christian for a long time, over 20 years. And this is the text that um, she sent uh, her pastor. And it says, thank you, pastor. Really appreciate the prayers for protection against this virus. Juliana is doing very well now. And I'm, I'm just trying, I'm just praying that no one else gets it. We are quarantined for 14 days. But if someone gets it, we add another 14 days. I'm trying to stay positive and fearless, but I am feeling a little nervous and scared. So please pray that God will protect us from this evil. Thank you so much. So the pain is very real. The pain is there. Uh, he, here's another one um, that it says, oh my goodness, yes, thank you so much. I got very emotional today and just started crying. I felt so defeated by this enemy, questioning God why this virus is in my house. Why is God not moving to heal our country and the world? Had to confess that and ask God to forgive me, trying to hold on to faith not fear so hard thank you and to advance to the evangel family always there for us so you see that these boxes of hope these quarantines obviously uh people are going through a lot people are going through even a loss of faith and and questioning god at these times but when they get this uh box of hope um th th that hope comes back let me let i can't hear you I can't hear you either. There we go. I muted myself by accident. You can hear me now? Yeah, you're good. Okay. It's, this is kind of hard to, um, okay, let's see here. Someone is trying to get in, but I can't get out of this. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry. Let me let the person in. It's Victoria. Okay, after this, I'm not letting anyone else in because it's very hard to get back to that. Okay. Here we go. All right. 
Okay, here we go. So once again, the pain, uh, people, you know, go through depression, anxiety, crippling fear, shame, questioning God and everything like that. The pain, uh, others battling hopelessness, the vulnerable, there's, there's people that are high risk due to health, high risk due to age, the unemployment, um, also those who have lost their jobs. Um, there's, there's more pain to this as well. Others, um, you know, homeless, uh, feeding programs are shutting down. Shelters are a hotbed for spreading COVID. The underemployed, single parents, those who, who have, um, can't afford to provide for their families. So there's a lot of pain, um, but um, I believe we have a plan. And I'm, I'm glad to partner with Chris and Evangel and other churches across, um, across the nation uh, to do this. So uh, here's the plan. And uh, let's just read from Luke uh, chapter 9, uh, starting at verse 10. Here's the plan. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew by, them, by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. And that's an awesome thing. He spoke about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed healing. There's a lot of people that need healing right now. Yes, physical healing, but also from all those things that we were talking about, depression, anxiety, loss of uh, faith, uh, and all those things. So a lot of people need healing. Late in the afternoon, the 12 came to him and said, send the crowd away so they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging because we are in the remote place here. And, and you know what? And, and you know what? I can hear myself. Oh. Uh, I, I heard my foot self for a second. Um, so, and you know what, there, there, uh, you know, sadly there are churches that are, you know, maybe people come to them for help and maybe they can't help them because of the situation that they're in, or maybe they don't even want to help them. But um, we want to be a church that can help people. We want to be a church that can, can, um, you know, um, not only tell them about Jesus, not only tell them about the kingdom of God, but also um, help them with their their physical needs as well as well as their spiritual needs so let's keep on going okay he replied you give them something to eat they answered we only have five loaves of bread and two fish unless we go and buy food for all this crowd and this is an awesome thing here in verse 13 jesus is telling his disciples and the disciples, at when Jesus goes back up to heaven after the resurrection, the disciples become the church. And we are the church now. And I believe that he said this to them, and he's also saying it to us. You give them something to eat. Um, feed their physical need and feed their spiritual need and uh, feed their needs. And then, and then they say, but we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. We only have a little bit. We don't have enough. What are we going to do with this? This is enough for, this is not even enough for us 12. How are we going to share it with thousands and thousands of people? And you're going to see it says 5,000 here, but hey, that they just counted the men back then. And so that that's at least 10,000. That's probably 15 or 20,000 people. And so I'm preaching now, but um, so uh, he's saying, we only have a little bit. And listen, YCA, you, did you know Evangel Church who started this? They are a church of 1,200 people. That's 1,200 people. Yes, that's a big church. We are a church of about 150, okay? Uh, 130 to 150 that show up on a Sunday. And, and what do we have to give? Evangel asks, what do they have to give? What do we have to give? We have even less than Evangel has. We have even less with, with the, the funds that we have, with the donations we have. And, and when I heard from, from Pastor Chris in New Jersey that we would receive help, we could receive help from Convoy of Hope, I was like, yes, that's how we can do it. But did you know that Convoy of Hope has over 700 people, 700 organizations and churches on their list, and we're um, church, uh, we're, we're number 701. So I don't know if we're ever going to get supplies from Convoy of Hope. However, I still believe God can use us. And I believe this, this story is very true to us that we are the church. We are the people that have the five loaves and the, uh, the five loaves of bread and the two fish. We are the ones that just have a lunch or a dinner for a family. But this is going to be multiplied because God is going to bless it. And you're going to see that this story is becoming true right now. And, and, I, and I shared with, with our, um, 
with our board members on, on Saturday. I shared with our board members on Saturday that, that um, I uh, we need to be obedient. God told us to do this. We believe we need to do this because it's God's will. Even though we don't get any, anything from Convoy of Hope, um, it doesn't matter. We still need to do this. And as we were obedient, then people, we, people just came out of nowhere and are giving us stuff. And yes, we've done the work as well. And people are giving us stuff and, and they're going to give us stuff and donations. But God is really doing a miracle just like he did all the way back then. So if you're not muted, if you can mute, please. Thank you. Um, but he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. And that's funny because about 50 each, you know, one of the first um, things that, you know, um, you know, the president and the governors were saying was, hey, make sure that, you know, you guys don't meet 50, 50 or more. But now you, we, we know it's 10 or more, right? And then it says, the disciples did so and everyone sat down, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. You see, uh, you know, we're going to help out people outside of our church, but I also believe that there's people in need in our church, and we're going to have enough to bless them as well. Amen. So, oh man, this is like a sermon right here. Okay, so I really do believe that. I really do believe that, and, and we're starting to see that. And you know what I also, uh, it, it's so great. I mentioned it on Sunday. I don't know if you caught it, but there are churches that are going under right now. There are churches that are not doing well during this pandemic. Um, however, we had our best month in this past March in the amount of giving we had in, in the past year. This was the biggest month of giving. How is that? How is that that we don't even have church, but the, but the offering is still coming in and God is still providing? It's because we have a generous church. It's because we have people that care. And it's not like, oh, because I don't see Pastor Vincent or I don't see the church, I'm not going to give. It, it, it just, it blows my mind because God is really doing something big here. Amidst all this, this craziness, God is doing something big. So let's keep going if you're not muted, if you can mute, please. Thank you. Um, we're going to keep going. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm going to stop preaching. All right, so um, we're going to bring the need to Jesus, just like the disciples did. We're going to make ourselves available to Jesus. We're going to offer what we have to Jesus, which is not that much right now, but I believe he's going to multiply it. We're going to distribute what Jesus gives us to the people, and we're going to watch Jesus work the miracle. And um, this is awesome. This is awesome because I was kind of worried this past week um, because of Convoy of Hope not coming through because I thought they were going to come through. But uh, when I tell you what's, what's happening this, this past weekend, it's just amazing what's, what God is doing so far. Let's keep going. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so... Here's, here's the process. Um, we're going to receive donations. We're going to uh, clean or um, we're going to actually put the donations in isolation. And I'm going to explain why we're going to do that and how that's going to benefit us. We're going to um, be receiving the request and the request are not going to be coming into our office or to our phones. There's actually a national website. And I want you guys to write this down if you don't have it yet. And you'll see it come up on the screen soon. It is getboxesofhope.com. Getboxesofhope.com. Get as in G-E-T, boxesofhope.com. And, and we're going to actually look at the, the website in just a bit. Um, so that's how people will request. And already uh, four, four individuals have requested boxes. We gave one away last um, Saturday. And then we have three more uh, or four more to fulfill this week. So it's about four or five that we have. Plus, that, that's cool and everything. But I believe once we get the word out and once we start, you know, putting out a press release and things like that, uh, we're not just going to get, you know, four or five a week. I believe it's, it's going to be close to maybe 20, 40, 60, maybe even 100 a week. How are we going to do that with the supplies that we ha came in this week? That's what Quinn is saying because he was here yesterday for the donations. That's 
that's what Sister Debbie and Jasmine are saying because they were here today for donations and they did not see a lot of donations come in. However, I believe God is going to bless what we have right now and he's going to multiply it. And then we're going to be delivering uh, what goes in a box. We're going to be talking about that. Um, we're going to be talking about delivering boxes, how, how that's going to go, and the follow-up. So the process, receiving donations. Um, we already have determined what supplies that we want to put in our boxes, and I'm going to show you a picture of that. We make that supply list public to you guys and our community and the city, and then um, we, we have our church and our community um, go to the supermarkets and get some supplies and drop them off. Now, once we start having a good amount of supplies, um, we're going to let you know, hey, uh, we have enough corn, we need some more of this. Oh, we have enough food, we need some more um, you know, cleaning supplies, or I know it's hard to get ha hand sanitizer, but we need hand sanitizer or we need hand soap. And so, um, you know, right now we don't have a lot of anything, um, but we are, we're, we'll probably be good in the food area starting next week. Um, so we'll need some of those, you know, the hand sanitizer, um, the, the toilet paper and things like that. Now, uh, I know, I know, you know, giving a, a roll of toilet paper, that is a, is a single roll that has the wrapping around it would be best. However, if you look at prices for uh, toilet paper, it's better to buy in bulk and they're not covered. And that, that's a hassle. But what, what we can do is we can wrap it in, you know, some kind of wrap or something like that, some, you know, um, plastic wrap or something like that. That's what, um, you know, the Church and Evangel did as well. It's just trying to get the, the biggest bang for your buck. So, and then we'll schedule drop-off times at our church. Right now, this week, Monday through Friday, this is all donation week. So if you can, if you're able to go out to the supermarket, take the long way home, or take the long way back home, stop at the church between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and drop off uh, donations, that will be great. It'll be great if you let me know. It'll be great if you let me know. If you're not muted, if you can find the mute button and mute, I hear some background noise. So, um, the, the thing is, uh, take the long way home, drop it off, and, and that will be awesome. And we'll thank you for that so much. So um, let's keep on going. Okay, so determine which supplies you want to put in the box. So this is what we have determined. And you'll see there that rice is there two times. So just make sure that, let me just see something here. Uh, I can't get to it. Okay, so, um, so we got canned meat. That's like tuna fish. That's... Uh, you know, can, you know, chicken meat as well. Uh, it can even be salmon, but you know, don't get, you know, too weird. I'm not saying you're weird if you eat that, but you know, tuna and the chicken, that's probably good to start with. Pasta, boxes of pasta, um, you know, pasta sauce, rice, uh, soup can be canned soup, or it could be, um, it could be the, um, you know, box soup as well. Um, crackers, canned beans, canned fruit, canned veggies, uh, cereal, applesauce, oatmeal, granola bars. And then uh, for the essential donations, the essential items, toilet paper, hand soap, uh, hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, uh, board games, card games. Now why are board games and card games essential? Well, you, you gotta do something to fill that time when you're home on that quarantine or like we're all home right now. And so it'll be good to, you know, we already actually got uh, packs of cards and we got I think like a hundred packs of cards so I'm going to look at getting Uno cards and um, if you could find uh, low price board games that would be awesome and so as you see down there in the lower right hand corner you'll see that on our regular weeks as we go up on uh, tomorrow um, you'll see um, the donation drop-offs are going to be Mondays and Tuesdays at 10 a.m. to uh, 2 p.m. And that's going to be in the back lot where we come in for church for the sanctuary. And um, so someone will be there and we do need more volunteers for that. We have about three or four volunteers that have volunteered for the drop off. And it could be a, a little bit of, of a boring time, but I'm going to tell you right now, our Mondays are going to ramp up in a big way because we're going to be getting big pallets two or three pallets um, full of food. Um, and um, those people that are there on Monday are going to use hand trucks and bring them inside and things like that. So, um, but this week, all week long, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we're accepting donations. Let's keep going. 
So the process, uh, make the list public to the church. It definitely, uh, we just made it public and we'll keep on putting it out on crew. We'll keep on putting it out on Facebook and, and everything. And I would ask this, I, I know that, you know, some people, uh, they care like big time what they put out on social media. However, I, I believe this is a big thing. This is a special thing. If you would share our posts about this, I know some of you already do. And I thank you so much. But um, if you can share your post, that will be, uh, our post about this, it'll be awesome. And like I said, next week, we're really going to go hard in putting out the word to everyone. Please spread the word to your family, your friends, everyone on social media, um, people that may be in need, people that may not be in need, whatever it is, so people know, especially in Yonkers. Uh, like I said, this is all across the um, United States, but it's not everywhere yet. It's, it's starting to get everywhere. I don't know if it will get everywhere, but right now we, we have it here in Yonkers. There's, there's, a, there's one or two, like I said, in the Bronx. Okay. All right. So let's keep going. So the process of cleaning donations, there are two options for disinfection uh, of all the, uh, all the collections. Uh, number one is isolating the donated items. We, we isolate them on a table or in a room away from people, away from, you know, where we, um, you know, pack everything because um, the CDC uh, says that the virus can live on, you know, inanimate objects for about three days. And we want to make sure, and after those three days, the virus is dead. So uh, after the, so we let, we let the items sit for three days. And so they don't have the virus anymore. That's one way of doing it. The fast way of doing it is disinfecting the item surfaces. So, you know, using a Lysol or a bleach or Lysol wipes, things like that, that, once once you wipe it and it's dry it's 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 done so it, within five to ten minutes you have it disinfected instead of three days however there's not a lot of cleaning products out there and that also costs money so if there is a free way to do it and we can wait and that's why we have monday and tuesday in the beginning of the week for do donations so by thursday and friday they'll be ready to go into boxes we're going to do it the free way we're going to make sure that we let them sit for three days and then they're good to go. So um, you, you can check here, isolating donated items according to the New England Journal of Medicine, the virus can live on certain surfaces for up to 72 hours. Isolating items for three days will ensure uh, that the items our church collects are safe to distribute. Not all items are going to have the virus. Maybe you know 99% won't have the virus, but we just want to be safe. We don't want um, people to um, you know, spread the virus. We don't want to spread the virus. So, um, isolating donated items. Try to have your collection area in an open area outside your building. Uh, try to reduce people opening doors or being within an enclosed space for any time. And that's what we are doing. And we'll go over the process for that. Limit collection hours and do not leave bins overnight for collection. This has to do with being sure you have a clear timestamp on the food collected. Number three, maintain social distancing, one family at a time at the collection area. This is an area that is not hosted. No one should be in this area to ensure the proper distancing and safety. Okay, isolating, donate item, limit the time of collection so you know your official start time and end time. We have done that. It's Mondays and Tuesdays at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Number five, date the table where items are collected and leave untouched for uh, three full days. Collections start on Monday, 427. Uh, this is an example. The food will be sorted on Thursday, 430 in the morning with gloves. Always have the gloves, always have the face mask on. We have the cafe um, downstairs on our first floor set up with tables and labels for each day. So if you are one of the people that are going to help out with the donation drop off, place supplies on these tables as they come in. Uh, right now, we have a table for Monday, a table for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, soon enough, we'll have, just, we'll have a couple tables for Monday and a couple tables for Tuesday, because that's what we're going to do in the weeks to come. But this week is a donation week. The process, receiving the request. Re request. So um, prioritize the need. Those exposed or affected by COVID-19, those vulnerable, health or age-wise, the unemployed, and others in need in your community. So um, if let's say we do get a huge number of people that want a box of hope, 
Um, we are, they're going to put why they need it. And um, this is how we're going to prioritize. If they're ex exposed or, or infected, that's going to be number one. Uh, those vulnerable with health and age, that's number two and so on. Because there's some people that, you know, they, you know, they, they need food and obviously we want to give them food, um, but they would be a little lower on the list uh, over someone that has the virus. Um, so receiving the request, everyone, everyone needs to go through www.getboxesofhope.com. Getboxesofhope.com. Everyone must sign, in, sign up through this website. It's how we keep track and stay organized. Share, with, uh, share it with friends, family, and on social media, like I said before. If you are in need, sign up through this website. Also, let's say you're helping out on one of the days. If we have a surplus of boxes, um, you know, uh, we'll talk about maybe just, you know, instead of signing up, maybe we'll give you one that day. But we do, we do want to go through the website, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time because it gives us, it gives us a, a good idea of how many uh, we're giving out and it, it helps us. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to stop right here real quick and I'm going to try to help some people get back in. There's some people that need to get in and I'm going to do that. So let's admit. Okay. All right. I think. All right, good. All right. So please go through that website. Don't don't feel shy or ashamed. We keep these confidential, as confidential as we can. We don't share names, numbers, addresses, only uh, with anyone else. We don't say, hey, guess who, you know, guess who got a box of hope, uh, you know, last week. We, we don't do anything like that. We keep, we keep everything discreet and we make sure that, you know, only the delivery driver knows where they're going and knows who they're giving it to. We don't give it to anyone else. So don't feel like you, you can't get a box of hope. Let's keep on going. So volunteer positions. Um, so here's the first one, uh, donation drop-offs. So donation drop-offs, if you would like to help with this, you, you can't have you know, a day job right now, um, or maybe you just have off on Monday or Tuesday. So it, they are on Mondays and Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, safely receive donations at the YCA Sanctuary entrance in the back lot. Uh, keep six feet distance from people donating and other other workers. Safely put donated supplies inside on designated tables in the cafe, like I said before. Always wear a face mask um, and gloves. Wash hands often and then shut off everything and lock up um, by 2 p.m. And then, we, and then we have our Boxers of Hope. Our Boxers of Hope will be coming in on Thursdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Um, we may not go all the way until 2 p.m., but there may even be some days where we'll go past. We don't know what the need is, but we know that there is a need. We don't know how great it is. We don't know how much supply will come in. However, uh, we may you know, only be boxing for an hour some days. Other days we'll be boxing for that whole four hours. So if you can't come right at 10 a.m., we would want you to be there at 10 a.m. If you can't come right at 10 a.m., be there at 10.30 or 11, and um, we, we, we would like you to box items. So you're gonna wear masks and uh, gloves at all times, keep six feet distance from other workers, safely bring supplies from cafe tables to the sanctuary, and then uh, you're gonna box a variety of supplies in the box. So we're gonna have two size boxes, and um, the one size is going to be for houses that um, request for like you know, one to two people. And so you'll put one of each thing in that box as much as you can fit in there, one of each thing, one of each supply that we have. And then we'll have boxes of three to five people and you'll put uh, two of each thing in that box. And uh, for you know, households that have more people, let's say they have seven, they'll get a box of three to five and they'll get a box of one to two. So we'll coordinate it like that. So the volunteer positions keep, keep on going. So the boxes of hope is continued. Like I said, there'll be two size boxes. Uh, and we're also gonna try to pack fun activities and games in the boxes as well, like the, like the pack of cards and the board games, um, maybe even some coloring pages. We have uh, crayons as well, little packs of crayons. Um, tape the box securely, put boxes of hope uh, label on both sides. We'll have these uh, stickers that say boxes of hope and uh, you'll put them on both sides. Bring all completed boxes to the YCA foyer area where the, uh, where, where the um, 
the entrance and exit doors are and, and put against the wall. Once all boxes for that week are completed, you can shut off the lights and lock, lock, lock down and um, exit YCA. Always when, when you're leaving, if you're one of the last ones leaving, um, just you know, shoot me a text or my mom a text and let, let us know that when you're there and when you're leaving. Um, then volunteer positions, um, keep, keep it on going. Delivering hope. And this is where we need the most people. We need the most people, yes, to donate and stuff, but this is really number one where we need, um, we need a lot of delivery drivers. Um, if we have more delivery drivers, you'll be doing less deliveries. Obviously, more hands or more cars or more delivery drivers makes, makes light work, okay? So um, let's say we have, you know, 20 drivers and we have 20 boxes that day. Um, then everyone has one delivery. If we have, you know, 20 drivers and there's 60 that day, everyone has three deliveries. But if we have more drivers, that would help us out. So when are we delivering hope? Uh, our delivery days are Saturdays at 10 a.m. And it's going to be a staggered arrival. I'm going to ask half of our delivery drivers to come at 10 and half to come at 10:15. If that's not staggered enough, I'm gonna do 10 and 10.25 or 10.30 because I don't want you just waiting online to get your boxes. I wanna be, uh, I don't wanna waste your time. So, um, you know, some people will arrive at 10, but please be on time. And some will arrive at 10.15. Now we have to make sure that um, we're on time with these deliveries. Don't come and deliver, say you're going to deliver a box and then on your way to a house, you're gonna stop at McDonald's or something or have breakfast, right? Uh, we're working for God here, which is you know the highest level that we can work for. So let's make sure we uh, get these boxes where they need to go as fast as possible. Um, drive into the YC parking lot, follow the flow of traffic and follow um, like a drive-through. So you're gonna, gonna just follow everyone. Um, you're not gonna get out of your vehicle uh, because we wanna maintain that social distance. Um, so make sure you stay in your cars. You can open the window if you want, that's fine, but um, we should have our masks on and our gloves on at that time as well. And um, let's keep on going. Stay in your vehicle at all times. Feel free. All, I saw a video on Facebook that everyone's playing, you know, the Waymaker song. Uh, we have a good Christian, um, you know, uh, radio station here in Yonkers. I think they switched over to 95.5 and uh, it'll be awesome if you guys all come in and play that all together and we can have like a little worship time together as we uh, put the boxes in your car. I think that'll be really cool. Um, and then uh, keep on going with the delivery. Stay in the vehicle and pop or unlock the trunk when you drive up to the trunkers. Who are the trunkers? The trunkers are going to be the people that put the box in your trunk. You are not going to get out of your car at all. How awesome is that? Um, uh, when you're at the church, uh, we're going to put the boxes or box right in your truck, uh, right in your trunk. And uh, so make sure that that is ready, that that is clean, and uh, we're ready to put that in. And we don't have to slam the trunk 10 times. Uh, so it goes in very, very nice. So please do that. We cannot put it uh, we want to put it in the trunk. We don't want to put it in the back seat or the front seat or anything like that. So make sure your trunk is ready and available. A uh, trunk will place one to three boxes in your trunk with the address written on the box. You don't have to go by the address written on the box because you're going to get a text um, from either me or someone else that is going to let you know all the information that you need to know. And that's including the address. That's including the phone number. That's including the email. So what you're going to do once I send you that text message, uh, with the address and all the um, the information, you're going to drive away from the trunk trunker loading area because we have to put boxes in the next trunk. But um, drive somewhere else in the parking lot or outside the parking lot and look at um, the, the the addresses and the information that was just sent to you. And so you can make a plan of where you're going to go first if you have more than one delivery. So this goes on, put, your ad, put the address in the GPS for your first delivery, but before driving to your first delivery, before you even go to that first delivery, now like I said, we're delivering to Yonkers right now. We may spread out if we get more drivers and more supplies. We may you know, go um, into New Rochelle or other places like that, but right now we're just doing Yonkers. Um, so it's gonna be somewhere in Yonkers. So it's gonna be about five to 10 minutes away from where, you know, from where we are. So before driving to your first delivery, send an email or text message, whatever you feel safe sending. Maybe you don't feel safe sending a text message because it's gonna be on your phone. Um, so uh, send an email. 
okay? So in an email or a text, you'll have the email and the text um, you know, number there for that person. And what you're going to simply say is you're going to say, hope is on the way. They'll know what this means because we would have already sent them an email saying that when your package is coming to you, you'll, you'll receive an email or, or, or text saying hope is on the way and that they can, that it's going to be there in the next uh, five to 10 minutes. That's what we tell them. So when arriving to the location of delivery, make sure to have your face mask and gloves on. Leave the box, the box of hope on the doorstep of the home or the, or the building lobby. Um, I'm going back and forth in my head right now and with my wife as well of whether people should go into apartments or not. I do not want you to go into apartment buildings. However, people may say, oh, someone's gonna steal the box. Well, they're going to be notified when we're coming. They know when we're coming. So if we leave it in the lobby um, and we, we just press the buzzer of, of what apartment they're in and we leave it there, um, I, I think we should be good. We don't want anyone coming in contact with anyone else, whether they have the virus or not, especially if they have the virus. We want to keep you guys safe. We want to keep them safe as well. So it's just a ring of the bell. You, you, know, you put the box down on the doorstep or in the lobby. It's the ring of the bell or the ring of the buzzer in the apartment building. And then you go to your car. Once you get in your car, then you send a second and final text message or email saying, hope has arrived. So they get they, they know that you're on your way, they get the ring of the bell or the buzzer, and then they, they know that hope has arrived, they know that the box of hope has arrived. So they get three times where we're letting them know that it's going to be there. Now, if it gets taken away, that's going to be on them. We want to make sure we keep social distancing and we want to keep safe. So this is the plan right now. May the plan change after a couple of weeks and we find a better plan? Yes. So that's why I need, you know, um, you know, you guys to let me know how things are going once we start doing it, or even how it sounds to you right now in your head. Uh, I don't want to hear right now, but I do want to hear it, you know, sometime this week. Uh, what do you think of this? Because this is, is a little, it's very controversial. It's very, uh, we, we really want to be safe. We really want to be safe. And that's why. And so this is how the church in New Jersey is doing it. I believe this will, this will uh, work with us right now as well. Okay, keep on going. So delivering hope. Um, if you have more than one delivery, repeat the steps again for each delivery, obviously. So um, once you do the first delivery, then when you're about to go to the second delivery, you simply send, um, you know, um, what, what did we say? Hope is on the way. Um, and then when you get there, you, you put it there and so on and so forth. Uh, there is to be no contact with anyone you are delivering to. If someone asks you to wait for them to pick it up, tell them due to social distancing and our safety procedures, we are required to leave the box for them at their doorstep. Now, for our first delivery, I have to say I was a little soft on this, and uh, I did give it to someone that lived in the residence. However, I should have went by what I'm telling you right now, because if that person I gave it to was sick, I would have come in contact with someone that had the virus. So, um, please uh, be very, very safe. Um, I think Brother Ronnie is trying to get in. Oh, man. So for some reason, this is very hard to do. Okay, there we go. I let him in. All right. Okay, so real quick, sorry. All right. So let's keep on going. Okay, so uh, last position is trunkers, and the trunkers are people that will be helping me um, put boxes in people's trunks, and they'll be getting the boxes, bringing them outside, and putting them in trunks. So um, if, if people are arriving to deliver at 10 a.m., I need um, the trunkers there by 9.30, uh, ready to bring out the boxes to outside uh, to the trunker area. And they need to wear a face mask as well and gloves, practice social distancing as, as best as possible, bring boxes out of the church building to loading area for deliveries, place boxes inside trunks, PV will tell you how many, and then uh, you will have a Sharpie. Every, uh, all of us will have a Sharpie to write the street address on the box. As you put it in that trunk, um, you want to put the street address real quick, the number, and then just the street address so that when the delivery driver gets there, they know which one goes where. 
let's say, you know, one is for 122 vineyard and one is for 45 burr hands and you don't know which is which, well, you're going to know which is which because we would put 122 vineyard or 45 burr hands on there. Those are some of my addresses, if you were wondering. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Okay, so we're almost done here. The process, the process, um, our numbers as of now, which I'm very happy because we're at the start of this and we haven't started it yet. However, we need more people. So if you haven't said that you're going to do something yet, if you haven't signed up, I need you to right after this or during this, send me a text message right now saying, hey, I would like to um, you know, be part of the donation drop-off. I would like to be one of the, um, you know, boxers of hope. Uh, I would like to, uh, you know, be a delivery driver. And our delivery drivers, see, we have it on Saturday because some people are still working. Some people aren't. Uh, some people are working from home. And Saturdays is really the only day that they can help. So, yes, we need a lot of drivers. So, um, donation drop-off, right now we have four. We can work with that. We're going to have a schedule. We're gonna have a schedule. I see some of you are already texting me. Please keep on texting me, that's cool. Some of you guys I already have down, but you know, it's all right, let me know. Um, so donation drop off, we have four. So that means that um, we have two weeks of rotation, right? So we'll have one person on Monday and one person on Tuesday. And then we have person number three and person number four for the next week, Monday and Tuesday. And like I said, um, you do need a good back for this. Uh, we do have hand trucks. We have two right now. One is in good condition. One is a little uh, rickety, uh, but we have another one coming on the way and we're hoping to get a, a big donation from Uline. We're waiting on that. So um, we may even get more hand trucks, right? So we have hand trucks, we have things, so you're not just carrying boxes, okay? All right, so uh, donation drop off, we have four. I would like to see that number go up to eight people so that we can have, you know, you know, uh, if you if you sign up for that, you'll have, you know, you'll be doing just, um, you know, once a month. And we don't know how long this quarantine is going to go on, but we're going to keep on going. And we may even keep on going into the future after this if people still need these boxes of hope. So a uh, boxers of hope, we have eight, that's good. We don't want more than four or five boxes of hope at a time uh, because we want to keep social distancing. We're going to be boxing in our sanctuary. So uh, I would like to see that number at least go up to 15, 16. I would like to see each of these numbers double uh, by the end of the week so that I can make a good schedule where you're only working uh, either every other week or every three weeks or something like that. Uh, delivering hope. Uh, which is good. This is our biggest number and we need it to be our biggest number, but I need to see this number grow to uh, 30. I need to see this double as well. We have 15 right now. We need more trunkers. We have a good amount right now, but I would like to see that number go up as well. We need more volunteers, especially drivers, especially drivers. We need them. We need delivery drivers. Uh, if you're someone that doesn't have a good back, uh, these you know, these boxes are going to be somewhere between, you know, uh, somewhere between, you know, five to 15 pounds. They could even get up to 20 pounds. So make sure if you don't have a good back and um, you can't carry these boxes that maybe you could be the driver and take someone along with you to help you deliver. It's even better, Sister Debbie said it today, to have, you know, two people doing it anyway. So I would like to see groups of two. That would be great uh, doing that. Uh, so we do need those drivers. Okay, so who has partnered with us? And like I said, I'm hoping we can get Convoy of Hope over here. However, um, that looks like a wish right now. Um, but they're not here, but God is still providing. Some awesome things have happened even just today. Um, going to, you know, ShopRite and getting a donation from them. And then, you know, hearing back from Feeding Westchester and, uh, you know, hearing from, you know, oh, it's, it's great. So who are we partnering with? Um, and I hope this, this grows. So, so far we are partnering with ourselves right now, YCA. And do you know, uh, I'm going to show you the numbers of what come, came in in just a bit, but, and it's very exciting. So YCA, we're also uh, with Louis Mooney's, who is with the Yonkers Hispanic um, Cultural Foundation. Really, really great guy. He just 
uh, you know, he lost his, his mom about a month or so ago. Um, and then now his dad has uh, coronavirus and uh, he's a really good guy. He's taking care of his dad right now, but he, he puts on the Hispanic Day Parade and it looks like there isn't going to be a Hispanic Day Parade in June because uh, of the COVID-19. So he wants to um, take the money that he has raised and put it into um, into this, into Boxes of Hope. So uh, it's a really awesome thing. So he has talked to Food Town on Palisade Avenue, and he's also talked to Dunwoody Restaurant and getting us some meals to go as well, which is awesome. And then um, ShopRite of Greenway Plaza, which is right by the square, um, has partnered with us. And then also we just received word today that we have, we're have partnering with Feeding Westchester as well. What are the numbers? Pretty cool here. So YCA, you have outdone yourself in just a couple of days. It's not even $1,200 anymore. It's $1,300 has come in from just YCA. And we haven't, you know, given out, you know, uh, you know, we haven't put out the word yet, but that is a lot of money to come in in just a couple of days. So thank you so much. It just not, it doesn't just bring a smile to my face. It, I could see what this money is going to do um, in Yonkers with Boxes of Hope. So thank you so much. This is going towards some supplies that we need. This is also going towards, you know, some of the donations and stuff like that. So thank you so much. And um, oh man, thank you so much. So, you know, YCA supply donations so far, uh, three to four people have brought in supplies and donations in these past two days. Uh, so we thank God for that. And then uh, Lewis and Food Town. Uh, Lewis is putting a hundred to three hundred dollars a week for the next six weeks, uh, giving that to Food Town. And Food Town is giving us uh, canned and and boxed items. But then Food Town is making a donation on top of that and and giving us um, so, some more food. So we'll have pallets of food coming our way. Uh, um, you know, hopefully for the next six weeks from from just them. And then. Feeding Westchester. This just happened in the past couple of days, and I just want to shout out um, um, Janet Herrera. Um, Janet, thank you so much. And I know you don't want that, but I just got to put that out there. Janet has a lot of contacts, and one of the contacts that she has is with Feeding Westchester, and she has, uh, you know, hooked us up with Feeding Westchester. And Feeding Westchester is going to drop off two to three pallets of food each and every Monday, and this can go on and on and on until we say stop. So, uh, and we can ask for more pallets if we need more pallets. We can ask up to 10 pallets if we needed to. A pallet is a piece of wood that has uh, just tons of food on it. So um, this is just amazing. So just, we, we just need to thank God. And so they're going to provide us food for about 150 to 300 people per week. So if we do have to make 100 boxes a week, we can do it. If we do need to make 200 boxes a week, we can do it. Who's getting excited? God is awesome. God has taken our little lunch and has, has, has just multiplied it because we said, God, we're going to do this. We believe you want us to do this. So we're putting it in your hands, and he is blessing it right now. Come on. So this is the beautiful website. Hope is on the way, and you can easily just press that get hope and um, or give hope. You can give towards this, but also get hope, and that's how you will um, you know sign up for a box of hope. Um, our vision is to see hope spread faster than COVID nineteen. Uh, take the next step. You, do you want hope, get hope, or do you want to give hope? And that's for churches that want to partner. So if you know of any churches that would like to also partner um, as well, hey, man, uh, we need help here. We need help in Yonkers. So, hey, we're not trying to take over the whole Yonkers scene. Uh, we would love other churches in Yonkers to get on board. So we're looking for churches across the street and across um, the nation to help out with Boxes of Hope. What's inside my box? Uh, those things right there, everything, sanitizer. We're trying to get our hands on some. Uh, toilet paper, devotional, snacks, hygiene kits, uh, soup, puzzles, diapers, paper towels, kids activities. Now, you may see things on this website and we don't have all of them. We're gonna give whatever comes in. If we don't get one or two items or three items, that's fine. We're gonna give what comes in. So that's what, that's what we're gonna do. So, you know, step one, um, oh, let's keep on going. 
All right. So these, this is from like a month ago. These are the states that it, um, you know, um, Boxes of Hope was in a month ago. Um, there's, there's more now. You see that New York isn't there as of four or five weeks ago, but as of a week or two ago, um, New York is on the map uh, because we're here, but also two other churches have signed up as well. So hope is on the way. If you do go to this website, I just want to see if it will go for us. Yes, it will. So let's see here. Let's just go right here. So this is the beautiful website. We didn't, we didn't do anything. This is just here and it's awesome. So if you wanted a box of hope, or if you wanted to show someone how to get a box of hope, you see my, my mouse here, you would go right to get hope. Receive a box through your local church. And look, like I said, there's more here. And you see that New York has three church partners. And you're going to see who those three church partners are. And you see that they're pretty much all almost in the same area. And so we're going to go like this. And they can say they have to select one. I am in a 14-day quarantine. I am in a vulnerable state due to health or age or other. It doesn't have to be one of these. But these are the two that we are going to try to service the most. Uh, if we get a large number, but we're going to service everyone. We're going to try to give one to everyone. So, or they could pick other, right? But if you go down here, you'll see there's Salem Church in Staten Island. There's uh, this uh, church over here, you know, Yonkers Christian Assembly in Yonkers. I don't know where that is, but no, that's us right there, Yonkers Christian Assembly. And then New Testament Temple Church of God in the Bronx. I just talked to another pastor in the Bronx that wants to do it. And the Bronx is huge. Yonkers is huge. Over 200,000 people. We can't I don't know, uh, you know, if we can make 200,000 boxes, but uh, I would love help. So we need other churches in Yonkers to do this. So these are the churches there. You pick one of these um, and then you submit. And then they fill out first name, last name, cell phone number, email, the age. Do you have children living with you, uh, your state? Um, and that's New York, right? And you pick the closest to you and we are there if you're in Yonkers and then you give your address and all this information, I am not a robot, all this information comes to you, uh, comes to us. It comes to my email and I save it and I say, okay, we have four boxes to get out this week. We have a hundred boxes to get out this week, whatever it is. Oh, Brother Tom's saying that they can give to us through the website. That's cool. That's awesome. So yeah, giving hope you can give through the website. That's cool. So that's how it is. And then they submit it and it comes straight to me. And, um, and then we start getting the box ready on Thursday and Friday. That's how it works. And we get it out and we have all the information. So, um, and then you can give a box also. Oh, there you go. Wow, look. Um, it's the local church that fuels our vision. We strongly encourage you to give directly through them. Participating in church partners are listed below. Wow, look at that. I did not know this. So, oh, wow. Okay, so our, 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 uh, our cash app is right there. I did not know that. That's amazing. Brother Tom, thank you for telling me. Uh, make a donation. You could donate straight to them or you can donate. Yeah, this is Pastor Chris right here. Really cool guy. Let's watch this video real quick. You can make a you can make a donation right there. I believe with certainty that the greatest commodity that is in short supply today is not found on the shelves of a grocery store, but in the hearts of people. One of the byproducts of the self-isolation, the quarantining, and the vulnerable people that are living among us is a sense of hopelessness and fear that is ravaging their hearts and lives as they're walking through this season. This is where the vision of Box of Hope came to be. You see, as we're reading in the Gospels, we see this account of Jesus, a multitude of need, and one young boy with five loaves and two fish. And when he places what he has in his hands, a little bit goes a long way. We believe today that Jesus is ready to do another miracle of that magnitude to combat the hopelessness of our day. Our vision is huge. We want to deliver a box of hope to every person self-quarantined, diagnosed, or exposed to COVID-19 and those that are most vulnerable in our land. In fact, we want to see us spread hope faster than COVID-19 
and see people know that there's a God who loves them, that there is a church and a believer in Jesus who loves them, and they are not alone. Join us in this God-sized vision. We believe truly that hope is on the way. So there you go. Awesome. So that was Pastor Chris, like I was telling you about. And this is the website. So share the website. What's the website? Getboxesofhope.com. Getboxesofhope.com. Uh, share on social media. Share, 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 share. The only way that we're going to, you know, um, bless people and spread hope is if we share it. If I'm the only one sharing it, if five people are the only ones sharing it, which sometimes happens usually on social media with our church, we need you to come out of the cracks of social media Put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, make a video like Sister Bernice and put it on YouTube. We need to spread hope. We need to do it. We need to do it. We need to do it. Please. Um, we need to mobilize our church and we need to get the word out there and then tell others to spread it as well. That's the only way we're going to be able to spread hope. We're going to try to get to the mayor. We have already gotten to the council people, uh, the, the city council, and I, I have their I have their cell, I have three of their cell phone, four of their cell phone numbers uh, so far. So, um, and thank you for, you know, some of the connections that I have there. So um, the process follow up, we're also going to follow up with people. We're going to have a, a note from the pastor inside the box. We're going to have a book of John and, and some boxes. We're going to have New Testament Bibles and entire Bibles. Um, you know, this is what our money that is donated is going to go towards as well. Putting, you know, stuff about Jesus, putting stuff about, you you know, what it is uh, to be a Christian and things like that and tracks and we're going to evangelize. This is going to be the biggest time of evangelism um, that we're going to have right now. And, and people are hungry to hear about God. So, and we're going to check up on them week after week and we're going to either send a text or an email and check up on them to see how they're doing. We're going to invite them to our, our online church. And then when we open back up, we're going to, uh, you know, invite them in person to come to church as well. So what's the payoff? Well, the church in New Jersey has been seeing a big payoff. Uh, people have been giving their lives to Jesus. Um, people have been on their, um, you know, church website. People have been on their live stream. People have been giving their lives to God. They've been saying thank you uh, over and over again. Um, I don't know what the payoff is going to be for us. However, I already see God working. I already see the miraculous being done. And I just can't wait to see what God is going to do as we're obedient and as we work hard for him, especially in the scary time when people don't want to come outside and, and are told not to come outside. However, I believe the church needs to become essential. The church needs to become essential once again. And I believe we are essential, but people have said that we're not and we should stay home and we should close our doors. Um, let's open our doors and let's spread hope. Let's spread hope, church. Uh, let's let's spread hope faster than COVID-19. Let's do that. So uh, once again, getboxesofhope.com, getboxesofhope.com, getboxesofhope.com. All right. I'm done. Um, current and new participants continue. Okay. Let's bring it back. Our desktop. I'm trying to get you guys back here, sorry. Oh. Okay. All right, sorry. Stop share. Press the Zoom icon again. I had to press stop share, thanks. Appreciate the help. Okay, so um, if you have a question or a comment, we have about a little more than 15 minutes before nine o'clock. Um, I believe there is a hand that you can put up, uh, which is one of the reactions. Um, so actually, it's not one of the reactions. Someone help me out. Where's, where's the hand you can put up to ask a question? It's on the, the more icon. On the bottom. Click on the more button, and then there's the hands. OK. Uh -huh. I don't see it, but if you guys could see it. Yes. Uh, so if I see a hand, I'll definitely pick you and let you know, and you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Does anyone have any questions? 
Um, Jasmine. Okay, so since today Debbie and I um, were at drop off, uh, just, I mean, today was a slow day, but it turned out to be a blessed day because um, as we were, we, we actually brought the table out into the lot because it was Ooh. a little chilly. So we were in the sun. So um, we were talking to people who were passing through and um, Debbie just happened to be on the phone with Cookie. And uh, a lady asked how are things going? And I said, well, you know, they're going slow right now. You know, we're just accepting donations or whatever the case may be. And um, she's like, what do you need? I said, everything, you know, um, cereals, pasta, beans, you name it, whatever you can donate, you know, we'll greatly appreciate it. So she was like, okay, I, you know, she gets a lot of pantry stuff. So she's going to come tomorrow, she said. Awesome. So she goes, she said she had to go to, to go to the store, go somewhere. And um, she comes back and she tells Debbie, I was inside bringing stuff in because we were ready to finish up. It was two o'clock. So she, um, I was inside and she tells Debbie, where's the men, right? So Debbie says, we are the men, right? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so she goes, so Debbie's like, why, what's going on? And she was like, oh, cause um, I, I could get you donations right now. I need a hand truck, right? We got donated a case of, of um, cereal, a case of orange juice, a case of beans, a case of eggs, a case of walnuts. It was amazing. It was amazing. So I'm not going to lie. We were a little upset that we didn't get no donations. And we're like, this is crazy. How are we going to fill four boxes? We don't have nothing. What are we going to do? And then this happened. Yeah. So that was just like, oh my goodness, if that wasn't God, then I don't know what it was. Seriously, guys. Because we were like, we, we didn't, we were like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to feed? No, eggs, eggs, you know, eggs is a big deal, guys. <laughs> eggs are expensive now. Yeah, yeah. So eggs and um, the orange juice that uh, comes in the containers, not the frozen orange juice, the containers of orange juice. Wow. So it That's was, I mean, awesome. yeah, yeah, so... It was it was a blessing. It was a true blessing. And I would say that that's the same story that that is happening in a in in the entire like you know process of what we're going through. Like I don't know where the stuff is coming from, but then at the last hour, it seems like yeah. we get the stuff. So it's awesome. Yeah, it was. It was. It was really. I mean, it 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 was. Um, we were just in shock. We yeah. were like, what? She Debbie struggling with the hand truck. <laughs> through the parking lot wow. screwing it up and she did it and we got it done and I, I was just I'm so happy that that happened that's great thanks so much for that mm -hmm. um anyone else have a question or a comment just, oh I think Eusebia has one um Eusebia no no I was just no that I was just showing an example with trying it okay cool it. thanks <laughs> sister Debbie I think I can unmute you I think um, I got you. Oh, you did it, and then I did it. Go ahead. Did I say something? Yep. Who, who are you talking to, Debbie? Yep. Oh, hey. Hey. Okay. This is what I was concerning to what you were saying about the deliveries. I know you said drop off, leave. You're going to contact them like three or four times. Okay. You know how Yonkers is, I'm just saying, some parts, it depends where it is though. You cannot just leave stuff in, 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 in the hallway or at the step or inside the lobby because sometimes you have guys hanging out there and, and sometimes the people are older, you know, and they cannot carry it. I'm not saying go into somebody's house, no, no, no. But I'm just saying, even though if you leave, like you say, leave it. If somebody take it, they take it. No, no. I think you should wait till they come down to get it. Cause Yonkers, I know Yonkers, and I know some of these people, and I know some of these buildings, and I know some of these areas. Some areas, yeah, you can leave it right there. They come, but some of these areas you cannot. For example, mm -hmm. you leave something, somebody, I, mean, I don't know. You go down in slow bombs. You know what the slow bombs is. You cannot leave a package right out there outside that door. Tell me, pick it up, mm -hmm. because it'll be going just like that. You cannot it's, leave nothing yeah. in School Street. I'm just saying different spots. 
you know, you cannot just leave a box there. Sometimes you are going to have to wait till the person comes down. So, yeah, this is, this, this is definitely, I think, one of the one things that is kind of an undecided in my head right now because I do agree with what you're saying. I do agree. That does happen. That may happen. And I don't want that to happen. I right. want the person that is expecting to get the box to get the box. Mm-hmm. I also want us to be as safe as possible. So this is something that I'm going to really have to think through today. I'll talk it over with my wife. Um, I want to see how we could do it in a safe way, but also make sure the person gets the box. So this is, this is a good thing that you brought up, Sister Debbie. So um, I, I should have an answer before we do our deliveries next week. So. Okay, and, and you know, I ain't always been saved. So I ain't scared of these people, number one. <laughs> number two, no, I'm serious here. Number two, don't start putting me just in these bad areas. But I'm just saying, I don't fear these people. And I know, I know, because they call me the mayor of Yonkers, which I don't know, which I do. Mm-hmm. You know, I know a lot of people, and I know, you know. Mm-hmm. But... No, I'm not afraid to go into communities or some places or wait, but I know how some of these communities are. And then you do got some people that are scared mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to go. And I'm not scared. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sister Debbie. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay, my pastor. I got, I got a raised hand from IAHPR, which I believe is, um, is Leonji and his mom. That's Ingrid. Ingrid, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Angie has a question. Is it possible yeah. to like? <clears throat> is it possible to do like you know two jobs at once? It's possible. We don't want we don't want anyone to get burnt out. We don't want anyone to do too much. However, um, if you're able to do it, um, and yeah, you know, obviously you do it in a safe way, we'll, we can definitely sign you up for two jobs. Yeah. Um, also, to what Debbie said, is it all right if, if, um, if a safer alternative is going up to the apartment itself and leaving the box there and, you know, avoiding contact? Say that like, again, I'm sorry. As Debbie said, how there's people hanging out in the lobby and they might steal the box, would it be safer to go up to the apartment itself and avoid contact with anyone? Yeah, right. that's, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. And hey, I call her sister Debbie, and I'm I'm 34 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, so, um, but yeah, Leonji, yeah, I think that that would be the only <laughs> other thing that we could possibly do, other than waiting for the person to come down, or um, taking it straight up to uh, the apartment. Yeah. Also, um, yeah. the powerpoints. Uh, this is recorded. Are we? Were we able to like review yep. these? Yes, yes. I recorded it. So what I'll do is uh, sometime this week, possibly by Thursday, because tomorrow I'm home with the kids. I'll, I'll upload this to YouTube, and you can uh, review it. Yep. Okay. Thank right. you. Uh, All right. Um, Sister Monica, let me uh, unmute you. All right. Sister Monica, you had a you had a question or a comment? Yes, I would like to comment on the delivery. Um, I have done deliveries just last Saturday from the Hillside Food Ministry that uh, Kathy, we met, you know, like, I think it was February when we met her. I mean, we, I, know, I know her for a long time, but what we have done with them, uh, and I delivered just last Saturday to eight families, uh, we get in contact with them over the phone and tell them, Right now, I'm leaving bags outside your steps or your door. We can stay and meet with you, but we will wait on our car and see that you're coming out and you're picking up the bags from us. And that's, it has been safe because we are also, you know, need to follow the protocol but it has helped us that way to let them know we are here and they said okay we are coming down now so we already inside the car we just have to see from our car that the person is the one 
who is picking up the box. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that could definitely be the way we're going to do it, but definitely let me talk it over. My, you know, um, yeah, so we just want to keep everyone safe. So if that is a safe way we could do that, we'll, we'll definitely do that. So thanks, Sister Monica. Appreciate it. Um, Sister Jean. Um, I was going to suggest the same thing that Monica and um, um, that young man suggested, Imagine. which is just leave it on the porch and watch it to see if, okay. you know, they pick it up. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Eusebia. Yes, I wanted to say, um, what about if you don't have enough driver, if you utilize the church van, either you could use the usual driver or responsible, reliable driver to make more than one drop off if you don't have enough drivers. I think that if that person is available, if that person is available, ask them from whatever time to time to make more than one drop off. I think that that's a great suggestion. Is bro Brother Ronnie was on this call. Is he on now? No. It's a, it's a, he got the blank screen here. Brother Ron, are you there? <laughs> His name is there, but he's not there. So yeah, um, I think he would be okay with that. However, I wanna just make sure with him, but he's usually you know gung-ho about uh, doing things like that. And he's probably missing picking people up and taking people home. So um, he'll probably do those deliveries, but I'll, I'll definitely ask him about that. I think that's a good idea. Anyone else have their hand up or a question, comment? Uh, Sister Bernice. Can you hear me? Yep. So for, hi. So for volunteers, so you can use the, the kids too? Yeah, uh, teenagers. Yep. Yep. Okay. That was my question. All right. Uh, Tatiana, do you have a question? No? Yes. No, no, I, I was just asking about the donations, um, the items, like certain sizes. Um, but Cookie pretty much said, like, maybe a variety of sizes. Because I was like, is it depending on the size of, like, the family? Like, I was saying specifically for, like, rice. Like, you know how it comes in, like, two-pound bags, five-pound bags. Yeah. Yeah, we would want, we would want the small ones, or we would have to do the work and, you know, putting them in different things, yeah. 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 So right now, uh, I'll get you, Lori. Uh, right now, we have about, I think, three to four boxes to get out this Saturday. Um, and I'm not trying to add any more to that, but if things, if, if they do come in, we'll get them out. But we do need like every supply for four boxes. So, um, and, you know, what, what I wanna say is this, the supplies that came in for our first box, are awesome and amazing. And I, and I thank those that, you know, uh, there were two people that brought those in and I thank God for that. Um, I wanna get more specific in what we're going to try to be putting out. Like, uh, let's say there's an apple, the applesauce. Instead of getting the larger applesauce, get like the single serve applesauces so we can get more of them and we can, you know, put, put those in, right? Um, I'm thinking of, you know, juices, uh, the, the smaller juices, like uh, single size. Um, so that we can fit, you know, maybe two of them in, right? Uh, instead of a, a whole, a whole big one, right? Um, so, you know, we, we actually we got some, we got some donations uh, today, um, and uh, they were. Uh, I'll send pictures out of them so we don't get the same ones, but we do need donations, you know, soon for these boxes. And they do need to sit for that time, or we can sanitize them real quick. If they come in on Thursday or Friday, um, because we only have four boxes to fill, we'll just we'll, we'll clean them off and let them dry for 10 minutes, and then we'll put them in the boxes instead of having them wait there for three days. Um, Lori. Um, one thing is what we have to remember and not be discouraged, but be more encouraged is you announced it officially on Sunday. And on Monday, when Quinn was there, yeah, one don two donations came in, one from the commissioner's office, and someone dropped off a donation. But then today, look at the big donation that came in. And monetary, it is coming in. So if in three days, we've gotten this much, Convoy of Hope may come, may not, but I think because people want to give, 
the more we promote by sharing and just over, even if you shared it in the morning, go back and reshare it in the afternoon, midday. The more you share it, the more it comes out. And when you share, for some reason on Facebook, when you share, don't just simply share, put a little comment, put an emoji, because with Facebook, it gets tricky and some things get lost and it doesn't continue to pop up when people open it up. When you put a little emoji, a little word, um, it'll stay in Facebook more frequent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe that. Also, and one I, thing that you also mentioned to the board was it's a care package. It's not a week of groceries. So we have to be mindful with sizes because also when you're doing the deliveries, if we're giving humongous boxes, um, if it's too big, the drivers are going to have to do even more trips because the sizes are going to be humongous. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, so w when you were saying that, um, yeah, definitely please share and share that way and put something, you know, in there. Also, um, I, I really do want to start promoting this on Saturday. So um, I did have uh, a couple of drivers and deliverers on the list to come in at 10 a.m. to take these boxes. We have four right now. I don't want to start sharing this now, but on Saturday, Take, when you're doing what you're doing, whether you are accepting donations, whether you are uh, boxing or delivering or being a trunker, um, I want you to take pictures. I want you to take video. Put that on social media as well and put the website. If you are in need of a box of hope, go to getboxesofhope.com. Um, and then, you know, that's how it's going to spread. And then once we see you put it, I'm going to share it. Lori's going to share it. Janet's going to share it. My mom's going to share it. Everyone's going to share it and it's going to go, you know, crazy. Okay. So, um, that's how this is going to open up in a big way. Um, yeah. Um, I see, um, I see, um, sister Rosa. Is that okay. Hi. Um, so, I, I was here, I'm like listening, but um, one thing that I was thinking about while you were sharing was, um, if I were to share on like Facebook, Instagram, um, should we put like the church's cash app um, name, um, like the church's info? How do you want that to be done? Do you want it to be? It's through the, through the, um, the website, no? Oh, it's through the website. Right? No, Pass but if I post something. For donations? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's for donations, they could go through the website. However, you could you could put our information for the Cash App or Chase Quick Pay. I'll do that. Yeah, because I, I if I post it, I have friends who live actually in Yonkers, you know, teachers that do that. And I would like to um, directly, you know, send them a message. So that would be better if we put the information from our church. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyone else? I think I saw, um, um, yes, Leonji. Um, is there a specific age group on the jobs? Um, well, if, if you're a driver, yes, but, um, <laughs> and also, um, for donations, I mean, for donations, you probably want to be with an adult, but, um, you know, you want to pair up with an adult for a donation drop off, but for boxing, um, there'll be other adults there. So you should be good if you're just, if you walk over or if you're dropped off, um, that would be fine. So, and e even if you're a trunker, if you put the boxes in the trunk, um, you'll be with me and you'll be with other people that are adults. So you'll be okay for that. Mm -hmm. Also, um, what, what kind of um, weight are like the boxes? Um, they're going to be anywhere from about five to fifteen pounds. Um, they they could get up to twenty, uh, but five to fifteen pounds. Yeah, uh, Bernice. Um, so the heaviest is twenty pounds. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Also, would it be smart? To, I would it be like smart for people to like go in groups, pretty much. So like, if it's too heavy, you know, for the driver, like. One does the driving, one does the carrying pretty much. Yeah, that is smart, yeah. That maybe, that maybe we could do it, that people are put in pairs. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not, gonna, work. I'm not gonna put in pairs, but I would suggest that and I would encourage that. It's a good idea. Um, Sister Bernice. Can you hear me? Yep. So the boxes, you said something about you needed the donations for the stuff to make the boxes? Yeah, we need we need the, the, the food and stuff to make the boxes, yeah. Oh, the food will go in the boxes, not the yeah. actual, not the boxes and tape and all that stuff. The boxes and tape we are buying ourselves, but before I buy all of it, I'm asking a company called Uline for some donations, and we're we're, we're waiting on that right now. So, um, yeah, we're just asking for the like the the soap and the cleaning stuff, the essential, right, right. and then the stuff food. to go in it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else have a question or comment that I didn't get to? All right, I think we're good. Thank you. Oh, um, Jasmine. Um, I'm, I'm just, cause Debbie and I, we were talking today. And, um, so like you said, we have four deliveries for Friday. The reality yeah. of the fact is, is yes, we got a big donation today. It was great. But the fact of the matter is it's not enough. It's not enough of, okay, let me try to reword it. I don't want to say that it's not enough. It's not, it's not the essential stuff that we need to fill a box. So just me speaking I, you know i don't know how everybody else feels about this but like okay we're talking about this right now if each one of us are talking about making a donation dropping stuff off this week so that we have enough this way we know okay we need x amount boxes of pasta okay Lori, you bring x amount boxes of pasta um bernice we need beans okay so bring four cans of beans to hold us over to fill the beans um i'll bring you four cans of beans no problem <laughs> A case of beans. Like, you know, <laughs> just just so that, you know, at least we have the basics to fill the boxes. Because like I said, right now we do have a few things, but it's not, you know, when the boxes that, when the box that got sent this week, that box, how it was set up was like a bre like breakfast. So there was cereal. Then there was um like enough lunch. to do like a breakfast, lunch, and dinner type thing for right, a family. Right. Right now, with what we have, we don't have that to do that. Mm -hmm. To 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 like. So we don't have what do we need for the four boxes. No, no. I, I I I said that a couple times too. Yeah. No. Oh, what, what, that, what, what, yeah, I did. What Jasmine is saying is, um, let's see what we have now, and then we'll put out. Hey, this is what we need. Yeah. No, no. To have for these. But boxes. I'm asking. I'm sorry for the four boxes that are going oh. out this Saturday. No. You don't have everything that goes no. in those boxes? No. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, it's, that's why I'm saying, yes, we have, we got a lot it, of donations. Yeah, th this, this, is, this is actually a very, very small problem. Uh, yeah. If, if we had 100 boxes and didn't have enough, that would be a big problem. Exactly. We have four, uh -huh. and we have, we, have, we have enough money, but also we want to make sure the donations come in from YC. Yes. Plus, we so haven't We've only gotten, been collecting two days. Yeah, and we haven't. Okay, we haven't but still, we, we have problem. breakfast stuff. We have breakfast stuff. We can, they have breakfast stuff. You have like cereal, you got the applesauce and you got the cereal. And once so, again, once again, like Lori and did the say. And the once eggs. Again, once again, like Lori did say, we're not trying to provide food for all three meals or all week long. It is a care package. So we need to make sure that we are feeding people. It's, it's, it's a box of hope. It's not a box of, you know, all three oh, meals. Even though that's good. I'm not it's, saying it's good. that. I know, yeah, I know no, no, it's not that, meant to be a, 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 a shopping, but I mean, like that box that was set up was, I mean, not major stuff in there, but it was enough for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for yes, a family. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, we have the cereal, at least we have like 12 boxes of cereal. So at least we know breakfast is covered. All right. We have mac and cheese. So mac and cheese can be lunch right mm -hmm. or or you know if you do it for dinner or whatever the case may be you know that's what i'm saying it's just it's not what we currently have now is not enough for four boxes for friday so maybe but if someone can someone go shopping like if yeah because i work during the week but if you guys need like i can give cash if somebody can go shopping if but i think that's what we're trying to avoid bernice we're trying to avoid of having to dip in the money that was donated 
for no, that no, for no, that no, we're no. trying to get contribution. That's why we're trying to get okay. donations, right? Okay. If I'm correct. Yes, yes. Right? but if we have to, if it comes down to yes. Thursday, Friday, and we still don't then have we donations, do then um, I or someone else will yeah. go out and get it. Yeah. And that's what we'll do. So this is not something to be, uh, you know, um, scared about or worried about. And I'm not saying that you are, but this this is a very small problem. Um, and I think we're, we're, we're going to get the donations to come in or I will get it. And thank God we do have that $1,300 that, that came in. So mm -hmm. um, I would be worried, like I said, if we had 50 or 100 boxes, we didn't have Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. No, but I'm not, I'm not talking about using the money that you've gotten for donations. I know what Bernice is saying. I understand what Bernice what is I'm saying. saying so is, you're saying instead of donating the stuff, you give me the, like, give, give PV the money. Okay, PV, this is my donation because I can't bring the actual stuff to you. Right. But and we can all just make a donation. Yeah, yeah, we can all make a donation and then somebody can get to the market or wherever, Costco. Um, if you need my ID, you can use it. You can skip the line with my ID. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine. And, if you, if yeah, you want or, any, yeah. or any healthcare worker that you know. All right. And then you can get the specific items that are needed. Definitely. That can cover... I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yes. Yeah. I Isn't have that, that sticker. Good? I'm not saying it's a care. We don't, I don't look at it as a care. Yeah, it is a care package in a way, it but it's to a feed a package. family. A, a care package is, is like when you're in college and you send something up there to the kids. It's, no, it's not like that. You just a family. No. Sister Debbie, I, I know you think that, but it is a care package. This is, is what we care. started. It's a care package. Um, we're not trying to feed someone the whole day or the whole week. It's a care package to just let them know that someone cares for them and, and just to spread hope. Now, if this turns into something where we can do that, then we'll do that. However, right now, it, it is a care package. Oh, so, okay, so then, then you have enough stuff to make your four boxes, then the stuff that's down there. That's good from news. From what you got today. Yeah, that's good news. Because then. this is, we, we need to remember, the box of hope, is totally different than when we participate with the mobile pantry that we want to stuff them for them to take and take and take of whatever yeah. is available there we want them to take in bulk with the box of hope it's giving some hope some encouragement and the key the key component that um we have in putting the box is we can insert whatever we want we can insert biblical um items we can insert um christian coloring sheets if they have kids so that's a plus because if you look at other ministries you know it's hard because you have to be politically correct and you have to be careful what you insert when it comes to religion but with the box of hope, we can put whatever we want for that per for that person, or if it's a family. When they put in the request, when they lot, when they register, they're putting how many people are in the home, and they're right. giving that right. information. So these boxes, it's four boxes, but we're not going to give four identical boxes. It's four boxes going by what is needed for each request. Family okay. size too, right? Huh? Yeah. Family, Family size, size too. as well. Yes, yes. Well, right, yeah. right. But Pastor Vincent, then if it's like you say, you got enough stuff there right now to make the four boxes. That's, that's great then. So um, I know we may, have, we may have some more questions and comments. Please text me or talk to me. Um, not tonight because it's a little late. I got to get home, but uh, I'll get back to you um, this week. And I, 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 may, I may, I may want to, no, I'm not home. I'm at the office. I may want to um, have another zoom maybe on like Sunday night real quick, not as long as this one, just so, you know, right before we, you know, launch publicly now, um, we know to share, share, share. And there, and I also want to let you know about the delivery and what we decide uh, because some good um, points came up today. Um, so thank you so much. And, um, and we'll get the word out starting Saturday and Sunday and we'll get the word out more. Thank you for being with us um, on this call. 
and I pray, I'm going to pray for you, and then um, I'll see you guys this weekend. Dear God, I pray for every single person that was on this call and is on this call right now. I pray that you'll bless them, bless their family, protect them, heal them, Lord God. Um, help them, Lord God, financially as well, Lord God. Help them in their minds as well, Father. We pray against depression and anxiety, Lord God, and I pray, Father God, that you'll help us to spread hope, but also, Lord God, we'll have that same hope in us, Lord God, and we'll share it with the world. Um, we pray this in Jesus' name amen. amen amen god bless you thank you so much i'm gonna take a picture of it before bye, I... <laughs> okay. bye Lori. Hi. Hey, Eli. i gotta go invoice cookie Eli. yes you do <laughs> you. i bless you guys i miss everybody so much <laughs> Mama, that's that's Matt. Sister Ruby. Oh, oh shoot. Wow. Te me fuiste. Ah, you say me. Uh -huh. Te me fuiste. Where are you? <laughs> Hi, Ruby. Okay, Chula, I see you. Bye. All right, guys. I'm bye. Gonna... All right, bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Get out of here.